I've just seen that there's an achievement in this game for becoming an alcoholic. That will be my goal. If this turns into a series, for the end of this series, I want to be addicted to alcohol. I want to be part of the 0.38%. I will become what I was always meant to be. My parents. I bought Kingdom Come Deliverance in 2022, and it's one of the most fascinating games I've ever played. Firstly, it puts you in control of a straight white male. Not many games offer this kind of unique cultural perspective. Secondly, you are just a normal bloke, not a dragonborn, elden lord, or witcher. No, you're unremarkable Henry, still living with his parents and going out drinking with his mates. That's where a lot of people give up on Kingdom Come, because they want escapism in their video games. They want to play a jacked 6 foot 4 alpha male with a carry weight of 300 kilograms, a horse sized penis, and naturally flawless skin that doesn't require you to moisturise daily. To be fair, Henry does look like he has quite soft skin, so at least he ticks one box. It's a new dawn, a new day, in our small town of Scallets, so let's seize the day by sleeping till noon. My mum wakes us up for lunch, and wow, what a baddie she is. Honestly, I'm so mad this is the 1500s, as washing machines didn't exist back then, so she can't get accidentally stuck in one and call for my help. I take a look around the gaff, and for some reason, 90% of our furniture is apples, so I shelve about 40 of the bad boys and then head out. I go see my dad, who is disappointed he didn't pull out 20-ish years ago, but honestly, I can't blame him. Just look at Henry's mum. Who would've? He's given me a list of things to do for the day, so I head off to the village. But before I get any of it done, I see it. My must-have fashion accessory for 2022, the straw hat. The game unfortunately won't let me barter for it, so I knock out old matey in broad daylight. I take the hat, and his money, and don't I look cute now? Brimming with newfound confidence thanks to this hat, I visit a dude who owes my dad some money. I attempt to negotiate hoping he will respect me and my straw hat, but he straight up refuses to hand over any money. I don't like to do this, but I'm forced to take it into hand to hand combat, but it would appear the straw hat didn't give me any stat boosts as this dude proceeds to beat me like I'm a 40s housewife. I even try to run away, but my man's a savage and chases me down till he gets that KO. I'm broken, paralysed on the floor, so I do the only thing a man can do in this situation. Shelve some more apples and run back to my mum to get a plaster. I actually saw recently that a company had started selling plasters in different skin colours because when you're bleeding, your main concern isn't to stop the bleeding, it's of course to be represented correctly. So kudos to them. Fixed up and ready to go, I met the boys down at the boozer where we decided it would be funny to throw poop at this German dude's house. He didn't do anything wrong, it's just this is the 1500s and everyone was racist, so we we didn't like him. Another group of lads comes running over to defend the innocent German because they're progressive. If there's one thing we don't like around here, it's progressive thinking. So me and the lads get in a big fist fight and I make the tactical play here to step back and dip out the action to let everyone else have at it before I jump in when they're all tired also known as being a bitch. We catch that dub, not because any of us are actually good at fighting, but because these other guys were just substantially worse. It was like fighting three Cody Garbrandts. Next up on my dad's list was buying him a pitcher of ale so he can drown his sorrows in alcohol rather than spending time with his son playing catch. It's okay, because my daddy issues are soothed here by the fact that barmaid is actually Henry's sweet lover, Bianca. It's on me today. <laughs> you can pay me back this evening. Oh, here you go. And this evening, I'll have something more for you. Oh! You'll have something to look forward to this evening. <laughs> yeah, you've already reiterated that point, mate. He promised to teach me how to use a sword. What use will that be to you? You'll see you later this evening. See you this evening. See you this evening. I've got something special for you. Is it this evening? I hope you'll thank me properly later. This evening. I'll see you this evening, Bianca. I'll have something for you in the evening, Bianca. Remember, we're seeing each other this evening. Sorry, don't mind me. I'm just stealing your onions. But I'll see you... This evening, Bianca. Ale secured and a semi from that dirty talk, it now seemed like the perfect time for some sword fighting lessons. My parents don't actually know I'm taking these lessons, so I've got to keep it low key. I'm sneaking around like an American woman trying to get an abortion in 2022. After a solid 10 minutes of sword fighting with each other, then getting into the arena and actually doing some sword fighting lessons, my teacher leaves me with these wise words that I make sure to follow carefully. And the main thing is to use what you've learned in real combat. There's nothing better than experience. So, yes, sir. What? No, we were friends. You told me to test it out in real life situations. Ah! 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 I was just trying to test it out in a real life situation. Mother! 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 Maybe next time you'll think twice about breaking the law. Wait, what the fuck is happening? Hello? The village is being burnt down and I'm in here. Who's raiding us? What's happening? Your, your most valuable fighter is stuck in this prison cell. Someone get me out. Oh shit, the door's on fire. It's gonna burn down and we're gonna burst out and save everyone. <laughs> no fucking 
way! <laughs> oh my god! I died in jail. Holy fucking shit. This time round, I don't commit assault and instead head back to my dad to tell him about my day. We have a real bonding moment as he forges a new sword for our king because he's the local blacksmith. Just as I feel I'm getting through to my father for the first time in my life, our little town unfortunately gets raided by an army much greater than ours. My dad hands me the sword and heads into town to save my mum as she was at church because she's a good Christian lady. He's actually a beast and fights through everyone until this bald dude takes him down. Everyone else then has a go on my mother and wow, what lucky lads they are. They chose the right day for a raid. This is like a real Batman style plot, except Henry isn't a genius billionaire. He's a vulnerable, uncoordinated dude in his mid twenties. At most, he could be a low grade weed dealer. I try to run to the castle, but they close the drawbridge. Wow, real sense of community here, leaving me out to die like I'm some sort of peasant. I'll have you know, I can hold more apples in my inventory than any of you could ever dream of. I've been swindled, but they tell me to ride out to Townburg and warn everyone there of what's happening, so that's exactly what I do. I really love this game's commitment to realism. I'm attacked on my road, so I go hide in a bush, and I'm then catapulted out of said bush and left in the air, falling forever. I hate it when this happens in real life. Does anyone else remember Call of Duty elevator glitches? And did anyone else actually try to do them in real life? life, because me and my mate always tried at school, crouching next to some sort of object and thinking that one day we would magically just start floating up in the air. The closest we ever got to that was when we started experimenting with drugs in someone's kitchen. I can say for certain that this come from us chasing the thrill of elevator glitches in Call of Duty. The moral of the story is, playing video games leads to doing drugs. I eventually make it to Townburg, despite my horse's best efforts to take the award for the slowest gallop ever. Seriously, if this was Cheltenham Races, it would have been taken round back and blasted in the head with a double barrel shotgun before it even got out onto the tracks. The people of Townburg welcome me with open arms. They're a wholesome community of people. They give me everything I could ask for, apart from maybe a platonic back rub, because that ride was tiring. Old matey Sir Robard even takes me to the kitchen so I can fuel up, as he thinks I'm hungry. Little does he know, I still have 20 apples stored in my colon. I also think he just meant for me to have a bowl of soup or something, but I completely ransacked the kitchen of all its food, including the bread rolls and cheese, which was a staple of the 1500s. I've even got my own little cosy room, but clearly no one told my roomies I was moving in, as I feel like I might have interrupted something here. Don't let me stop you gentlemen, if you were going to make sweet love on the living room floor, please continue. Don't worry about the noise either, I'm a loud and proud kind of guy myself. When I use public restrooms, I don't put toilet paper in the water to suppress the noise. I in fact do the opposite, I bring a megaphone with me to amp amplify my splash noises and assert dominance upon all the other stalls. I catch a little bit of sleep, but can't really rest too well as, you know, my family and friends were murdered about 10 hours ago. As if the Lord intended it himself, a middle-aged baddie walked through the door into my room. That hair braided and tucked behind her ears, the dress covering her ankles, and the tasteful nipple piercings. This may be the perfect woman. I know Bianca hasn't even been dead a full day yet, but the best way to get over a previous relationship is to dive headfirst into a brand new one. Trust me. Maybe the evening is back on. Not quite the evening I had planned, but this evening is back to being an evening. I've put the straw hat back on. Oh, it's an evening, my darling. Tell the story of the raid. Bro, I'm not joking. They've been having a conversation for like 10 That's fucking crazy. minutes. <laughs> what? I just listened to you talk about your husband for 10 minutes for you to leave. Fuck. It was a straw hat. Why did you take it off, Henry? I really thought that was heading somewhere romantic, but she proved to be a self-respecting Christian. If I'm lucky and we keep getting to know each other, maybe one day she'll show me some earlobe before we get married. Who knows? I get woken up again a few hours later, and honestly at this point, I'm fuming. I've had a high-key stressful day. All I want is my eight hours, but apparently that's impossible. Anyway, we're all awake to greet Sir Radzig, the king of my old town, Scalitz. Good to see that his tactic of hiding in the castle and drinking wine while all of the villagers died really worked out well for him. That morning, we also see the army, and more specifically the bald dude that killed Henry's parents. The devs really captured this evil bald dude so well. He looks like the kind of guy that only sends dick pics using the wide angle lens. You guys have got it easy, the wide angle is such a life hack. Back in 2016 when me and my girlfriend got together, phones didn't have a wide angle lens. You had to be way more authentic with it, using only natural advantages like good lighting and shadows and a bit of photoshop to add an extra 3 inches. Bald dude is like, yeah is Sir Radzig here boys, I want to kill him. Our dude is like, nah mate not seen him, leave us alone, and he actually does. Wow, what a result. We now need to return to Scalitz to bury our parents, but Robard tells us we're not allowed to leave. All of a sudden, he thinks he's my dad just because we cuddled in bed last night. I devise a Michael Schofield-esque plan to escape, 
I'll grab a lockpick, steal a guard uniform, and walk out like it's nothing. This plan, however, has more gaping holes than your mother. The first one being that I don't actually have a lockpick, and can't afford to buy one either because the only cash I have is from that villager I knocked out earlier for the straw hat. I have to scour the castle until I eventually find a valuable silver goblet, so I just slip that in where I'm hiding these 40 apples and sell it. Now, with my one lockpick in hand, I was ready to commence Operation Escape Townberg and bury my parents. I have one lockpick. One chance, one opportunity. Sees everything I ever wanted. <sighs> Very easy, okay. Hello? What the fuck? Okay, I'm gonna look at the help section. Oh my god. Okay, I've gotta find the sweet spot when it turns gold. Okay, it's gold here. No, no, no. No, 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 fuck! Can I not just escape the castle like this? Raise the alarm, he's trying to escape. No, no, I'm not, no, I'm not, don't raise the alarm. Oh fuck, oh fuck, leave me alone. All right, Henry, you have to swim. Can you swim, Henry? Damn it, I wish I was able to swim. Fuck! <laughs> Jesus, you gave me the run around. All right, so that went nowhere. Back to square one. I wasn't really sure what the plan was now. That was until I remembered Henry's one secret weapon. Despite having some of the worst hand-to-hand -hand combat skills I've seen since I made those two cerebral palsy kids fight each other at my school, Henry does actually have an incredibly deadly submission game. His standing rear naked choke puts the likes of Charles Oliveira to shame. So I find a secluded guard, choke him a little too hard for him to get turned on by it, and take his uniform. Off I go on the long walk to Scalitz because I'm an idiot and forgot to bring a horse with me. As if things weren't already depressing enough, it then starts chucking it down with rain. My parents couldn't have picked a worse afternoon to be buried on. On my trip, I do actually take down a couple of bandits who are trying to loot the dead bodies, as that's unethical. To make things right, in God's hands, I loot the bandits, then loot the dead bodies myself, to truly restore the balance of good. I arrive home and it hits me harder than expected. I even find my dearest Bianca stiffer than my pain was for her. Young love that died too quick and never bloomed. I didn't even get my chance to show her my Warhammer collection that would have certainly secured me a pre-marriage over the trousers handy. As if my week couldn't get any worse, a group of bandits come along to steal my sword. I stand my ground, but get the shit kicked out of me, as expected at this point. This trip has been a huge mistake. I just want to go back and curl up in bed and have Robard scratch my back. As I'm taking my last breath, about to pass away right where my parents did, kind of poetic. Teresa, a local girl from the village, is here to save me, and she's brought back up. My life has been saved as she carts me off back to her father's mill and tends me back to health. What a simp. She does have her earlobes exposed, so she's not quite as self-respecting as that woman I met in Townburg, but still, it's better than my backup plan, which was to have a little night to myself with Bianca's cold body. I get up out of bed and have a look around the local town. I feel like I possibly could have died back in Scalitz, because I'm in heaven right now. All I see is good Christian women doing laundry. It's my perfect scenario. If you did enjoy it, then all I ask is that you leave a like. It really does genuinely help with the algorithm and all that stuff, pushing my channel out there more. And subscribe if you find yourself coming back here a lot. A big thank you as always to those of you who have clicked the join button and become a member of the channel. And a big thank you as always for watching the video. I love you all, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. I just want to give a massive shout out to my mother load Void Boys and above, Bjorn Van Den Hatter, Xyphon Productions. Thank you guys for your support.